Okay, well, hi, everybody. This is Rebecca Over 60 with babyboomster.com. That's my blog. And today I am talking to Laura Lynn Morrissey, who is the founder of a website called Silver Savvy. It's a shopping website that has experts and information and all kinds of stuff for older people. So I wanted her to explain to us what it's all about. So thanks so much for being on the call, Laura. Thank you so much. I really appreciate meeting you. I actually had the opportunity to comb through your blogs and some of your videos. And I have just been smiling and laughing and you've got aging down. Like you've, you've figured it out in terms of just Uh staying positive and all the things that that I think make, you know, the reason why I get into this business important, you know, because I think at the end of the day, we're all getting older and uh-huh. there's a lot of information out there and perceptions about older people that I don't think are correct, quite frankly. And I know you've talked about it and some of the things that that you've done online. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm 60 and, you know, I don't feel 60 and I don't want to be treated like I'm 60. And so, you know, by way of background, I actually grew up in financial services. So I spent a number of years with companies like Fidelity Investments and several other companies and really built a customer service reputation. So I was the one you wanted out in front of customers and, and I knew how to listen to them and I knew how to get what they needed done. And as I got a little older, I started facing issues like all of us do. And I started taking care of my mom and she had a number of health issues. My dad had health issues. So here I am balancing a a pretty demanding career uh, living way across uh, in California. I was from Boston originally, and I found myself having to deal with all those issues. And so I felt as though I could do a little bit better than what I saw in the the healthcare and home care business. So I decided to leave financial services and started a home care company in the Boston area. It was a privilege to support the families that I worked with. And what I saw was, you know, a lot of older folks whose voices were being muffled for all sorts of reasons. And I became a real advocate. And so I sold that company to a couple of folks uh, in Manhattan that wanted to get into Massachusetts. But I felt as though at my age, I still had another fight. And so Mm -hmm. I wanted to still be part of the game. And so I started Silver Savvy with the idea being that I wanted to celebrate getting older. And I wanted to bring forth a lot of the educational resources that I had learned over the years being in home care, did a lot of public speaking around issues that matter, you know, Medicare, long-term care insurance, uh, VA benefits, you know, what it's like to get older, how we'd like to be treated the way that we were treated when we were 20 and 30 and not, Mm -hmm. you know, as someone that's just in the room. And so Silver Savvy is really meant to deliver on that. It's really focusing on folks that are over 60, as well as the daughters and daughters-in-law who are primarily the caregivers in dealing with uh, a number of, you know, different stages of your life. So whatever life you're leading, whatever stage you're in, you know, you can still live an active life. You might have a chronic illness. I mean, I saw your interview with Elaine Lelaine and, you know, (laughs) dealing with chronic illnesses and yet she's still dealing, she's still a positive person. She's still moving forward. And so I think all of us want to have an opportunity to either celebrate moving forward or learn how to move forward. And so Silver Savvy offers products. If someone's living an active life, if someone's, you know, in in some level of adapted life, wellness products. I also offer a blog and the blog actually deals with the gamut. So it, it could be issues facing, you know, older folks. It could be someone like myself, I'm out there hiking and I want to talk about my experiences hiking, given that you know, I'm now suffering from a little bit of arthritis. So I have to be Mm -hmm. careful where I hike. And um, so it's been received pretty well. I've actually been busy on calls like this. So I'm pretty excited at the reception. I've had a lot of folks that I've known in my career, reaching back out to me saying, this is awesome. You know, I'm glad you're doing this. But now I'm finding, you know, folks like yourself, that have been doing this for you're kind of a trailblazer. I mean, you've been doing this now for 10 years. For 10 years. So more than that, uh, I think. <laughs> is, it, is it more than that? So I, it was like, yeah, I think I, well, I started Baby Boomster in, at the end of 2011. Oh my goodness. Okay. So it's older than, yeah. yeah. So good for you. Yeah. I remember going to buy a new car and someone 
came up to me and said, you must be excited to have a car like this. So you can, you know, take your grandkids with, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I, I don't have grandkids, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> stop assuming, you know, let's be honest here. You know, I want to be treated as a person who's is still quite active and will be until the day I die actually. So. Right. Yeah. Well, I understand that I'm 70 and I, you know, <laughs> because I'm, I have a blog for women over 50 or 60, actually, it's more like over 60 with the baby boomer generation. Brands are coming up to me and like wanting me to promote things like adult diapers and yes. hearing aids and, you know, the whole thing. And I mean, I do that, but at the same time, I'm going like, you know, that's not really where my mindset is right now. I think there's a lot of women, especially women probably because they tend to live longer, but they're still pretty active at advanced stages. I mean, look at Jane Fonda or, you know, Lily Tomlin, any of those people, they're, absolutely. they're doing pretty good. <laughs> well, it's, it's it, absolutely. And, you know, I don't think of myself as getting older. I'm still, I'm just, I deal with whatever, whatever comes my way physically and want to live positively. I'm like, you talk about the blue zones and, you know, what's goodness is coming out of the blue zones and what are the components of living well, you know, someone like me, I'll be honest, I, was a pretty terrible workaholic. And I really had a very narrow view of my life. And it was usually from an mm -hmm. office and it was usually long hours. And I had my weekends and I was doing things around my house or I was limited, you know, my limited volunteerism because I was so busy with my career. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of other areas of, of my full life. I was not paying attention to. There was not a lot of self-care. There was a not, I, you know, I wasn't really thinking about my health as much. I was working out, but, you know, I might not have been eating as well as I could have and what have you. So as I've gotten into this new journey, I'm learning from others. How are you living so well? And how are you living so positively? And what are the components? And it's really, you know, five or six things mm -hmm. that in my mind, give you our well lived life. And you know, it's, you know, believing in something greater than you. It's taking care of your body. And you you talk about all this and in the interviews that you've done, you, you take, take care of your body. You listen mm -hmm. to what your body is saying. You push your body because even at, you know, 70, 80, 90 years old, I'm a certified aging specialist and fitness trainer. You can still lift weights, even if you've got osteoarthritis. In fact, that's healthy for you to lift weights, but you need to do it in a certain way. You know, yeah. you have to have a purpose every day. You have to have a reason to get up, which is probably why I'm always going to be working. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried know, the what's volunteer retirement, thing. right? <laughs> I know. I tried the volunteer thing and I haven't quite figured that out yet. So I'm going to, you know, I'll figure that out. But I want to be in a positive environment. We want to be in pod positive environments surrounded by people that care about us. Elaine Lalane said, you know, you want someone to love. So, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate right now. I've, I have a 30 year relationship. My husband's fantastic. I have a wonderful relationship, but I have lots of friends who are either getting divorced or lost their significant other. And they're in this huge transition. And so yeah. helping them to reconnect with friends and getting outside of that relationship that they have and kind of rebuilding, you know, this new support network is kind of a, another thing that I find myself doing. And that's, you know, again, part of living life well. So, so that's what I'm yeah, doing. I, I know I'm in that space. I lost two guys, actually. Oh, <laughs> so, oh. Like a lot of people fall apart and everything. For me, it's just like kind of move forward. I just, you know, it's just the way I am, I guess. Have so, you always I'm been not... kind of a forward, a positive mindset? Have you ever been somebody that's always kind of just get going? Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I don't want to be a victim. Like I didn't even like to go to grief counseling and stuff because even though it was offered to me, not that I don't think it's a good thing. It just wasn't where I was at, you know, I, I felt like I could motivate myself to find things to do, find a purpose, you know, I stay busy all the time. And that's important. I think you already, so you validated, I've got the tools, I understand what I need to do. I'm mm -hmm. going to acknowledge what just happened. I'm not going to ignore it, but I'm also not going to, you know, let it bring me down. So I become a different person. And I think that's, that's important. And, and I think having, you know, a support network and you know, based on what I've learned about you, you've got a, a pretty robust life. And uh, I think that's <laughs> super key. I made and a lot of mistakes. Lot. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did everything wrong. I mean, totally. I was like, you know, uh, trying to be an actor in Los Angeles. So I didn't do all the typical things like the nine to five and all that stuff. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be retired or anything like that. But I really enjoy it. I think that 
sometimes people are retired and then they just go out to pastor and they just don't last very long because they don't, they don't have and anything that's a to do. Statistic. I think one of the reasons why a lot of us, you know, I, I'm living such a different life than my own parents. And a lot of it is because we talk more than we did. I think, you know, the older generations didn't talk about their experiences. And I think right. we're talking about what it's like to be an older woman and how we want to be treated. I think we were always capable, but we were not empowered. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, now we, we have the opportunity now to talk about these common issues. I mean, I was on LinkedIn the other day and you know, I never talked about personal issues uh, in my, because I, you know, I was often, and I mean, quite frankly, the only woman on a team of men. So, you know, mm -hmm. I was, I felt limited in terms of what I could talk about. So here I am going through menopause. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm dripping in these meetings and I had to have like bottles of water at all times, or I would, you know, freak out. But, you know, when are we going to be able to talk about those issues going forward in the work environment? Because it is so important to acknowledge that, you know, we didn't feel as much as I still plowed through everything, delivered everything, still did super well. I didn't always feel good. You know, I didn't always feel good and I did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, these sorts of forums like what we're doing today is, is I think important to let women know that, you know, it's okay to get older. It's okay to not feel good, but you know what, there's lots of things you can do to live the very best life. And, um, you know, my goal is to deliver on those and be that resource. <laughs> yeah. So you have some products and stuff on your shopping site and talk about that. Like what types of products are they? Like it's a, kind of like a mini Amazon or <laughs> sort exactly. of. Exactly. So when I was in home care, you know, one of the things that I dealt with, uh, we had 200 caregivers, but a lot of times I was in front of the families at the start of our services with them. And, you know, a lot of times families, as, as you may know, families are taking home their moms and dads and loved ones, oh, and often in an acute state. So the experience that I had in helping families to set up their homes for either to stay independent or, you know, hospital to home setting, or any kind of a rehabilitation, what products were the best or the ones that served us the best. So I have some very specific opinions as to what products <laughs> I thought did well. But as you said, this isn't about walkers and wheelchairs. The products that I also proponent of through Amazon, because um, you know, there's like what, 12 million products. And I watched uh -huh. families like get on Amazon 50 million times. And I thought, you know what, what if I could guide them through different scenarios and say, you know, this is the 20 things you need if you're going to assisted living. And mm -hmm. so I talk about that. What are the 15 things you need if you're setting up, you know, your loved one to come home. And oh, are you starting hiking? Well, I was in that role too. And I started hiking and I made a lot of mistakes and I overpacked my backpack. But here's the backpack I love, or here's the the watch I use or the hat I use when I'm getting attacked uh -huh. by horse flies. There's 170 or so products that are really were selected for those of us that are over 60 in whatever stage you might be in. You know, there's a lot of folks dealing with memory issues or anxiety. And so those wellness products are products that we would have recommended families to buy and put in place to help alleviate some of those symptoms. Now, you know, as I learn and as I get feedback from clients and from, you know, the marketplace, I'm sure folks are going to say like, you know, what about this product? What about that product? You're missing this, you're missing that. But I had to start somewhere. Yeah. And, well, yeah, you can always uh, add on, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I've started to do some product reviews. I want folks to know that some of these products are easy to use. You know, some folks are embarrassed to buy certain equipment for their bathroom, but mm -hmm. you know what? It's very easy to fall, especially as we get older. And so if you just put a couple of pieces of safety equipment here, out, here's how easy they are to install. And then you'll save yourself a fall and, you know, perhaps a, a stay in rehab that nobody wants to go to. So, right. I think even people that are really active at, you know, as they get older, I mean, you really have to think about that universal design in your house, because sometimes, like, maybe your bathtub is too high, or, That's you know, it. if you're thinking about remodeling, you want to think about making it easier for yourself rather than harder, and not necessarily putting in like a walk in tub, but like just something that makes it simple to walk in so you don't have to climb over something. You know, it was interesting when I first got into healthcare, you couldn't easily buy equipment. It was, you had to go to a medical supply place. As more of us have reached, you know, the age of 60 and above the retail. And again, retail hasn't yet totally focused on us. They're focusing on our health problems. But at the end of the day, you can go into a Target or a Walgreens or, or a Home Depot, and you can find mm -hmm. more and more of these adaptive products so that you can stay in your home. Because as you know, everybody 
there's very few people that don't want to stay in their homes. Uh -huh. And so how do you keep your home safe? And there's, you know, a few products that you could use. And another thing I'm a big proponent of is, you know, because I do a lot of coaching on evaluating assisted living communities and independent living communities. And, you know, I really don't want to leave my home, but it's a two story. And I'm, I really don't want to have to deal with the stairs. And I say, actually dealing with the stairs is not a bad thing. And, you know, yeah. here's the exercise routine that you want to establish to keep your core strong so that those stairs aren't such a, a scary thing. And maybe put in some night lights or some runners or what have you. So, you know, what are your life goals and, and the products that I'm going to offer or that I do offer? coupled with the coaching that I provide and the blogs that I write, you know, hopefully help people and guide people to make the best decisions for themselves and have some fun doing it. And then I noticed that, you, yeah, you have scheduling consultations. So that would be with you or do you have other people? So I have several folks on my team. I have a, a very wide network of all things aging, which is, I think, super helpful. And, mm -hmm. you know, you obviously start with your friends. Hey, Laurel, can I talk to you about something? I mean, I'm coming out of financial services. Yeah. Nobody knew what I know now, you know, so the consultative services that I offer are around long-term care insurance claims, which I facilitated hundreds of claims and had great success. And so I have mm -hmm. a very strong process on how to execute that. And families, a lot of times are in crisis. So they want someone that's going to take care of getting this claim through so that they can get access to, you know, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars in benefits. We have expertise in selecting a home care company. It's not as easy as people think, you know, there's a lot of great companies out there and I can help you find them and I can help mm -hmm. you ask the right questions so that you get a home care company that is licensed and accredited and has the, the people that you want. So that's a second type of service I provide. And the, the first meeting is free consultation. And, and then we decide if it makes sense to move forward. And then there's a contract involved. And typically it's a flat rate, but uh, at times I can do hourly. It depends on you know what ultimately comes out of the first consultation. The third service I offer is fitness training around functional aging. So mm -hmm. you know it's not about becoming buff. It's about, although you could, it's about staying functional. It's about being able to pick up your grandkids or pick up your groceries or be able to get in and out of your car. We all know right. about hip flexors, right? And so creating those nutrition plans as well as uh, fitness plans that will keep you active and keep you strong so that you continue to climb those stairs and that you continue to navigate, you know, sidewalks and, and whatnot during the, the winter time. You don't have to deal with that, but, but we do here on the East coast. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, we sometimes we do. <laughs> no, that sounds really fabulous. I mean, it's really a very comprehensive site. And I recommend that all of my watchers and readers check it out. And I'll definitely leave your link in the description in my video and on my blog post. Well, um, I appreciate that. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I did very well in home care. And again, I think it's because I spend my time listening to what matters to the people that I'm sitting in front of. And I try to put together a plan that makes sense. And so I thought, you know, I don't do home care, healthcare anymore, but all of these other services that I did provide, I still mm -hmm. think that they're very much needed and, and more than ever. And so, yeah. you know, having an opportunity to talk with you, I'd love to have you be on my, you know, I'd love to interview you for my site as well, because you're fantastic. Sure. So fun. Oh, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Well, thanks so much. I, I want to keep it kind of short because otherwise Zoom's going to kick me off any second. So you got it. You got it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Rebecca. It was super nice to meet you. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity to talk to you.